What's up folks, it's here, welcome back to the channel. We've got another FIFA 23 custom tactics video for you guys today. And we're going to be taking a look at the 4-3-2-1. This is like an on and off formation that I either love or hate, depending on the like the current like patch and the meta. Right now in FIFA 23, obviously with the opening weeks, and it works like an absolute wonder. We were able to go 11-9 uh, with it while playing Golden Goal, just for context, Golden Goal, Foot Champs, went 11-9, blitzed it in under two hours. I've been practicing with it in Division Rivals, and then we also played a draft with it, I believe, as well. Overall, formation is working really well, uh, and this is the best, well-rounded system that you should be able to definitely work on next gen because I play on next gen. Uh, but the way I've done it is there's a mix of like lengthy controlled and explosive players in there, so that it should transfer pretty well onto old generation as well. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like right on. It's greatly appreciated. It lets me know you enjoy this content and want to see more. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Without any further ado, let's dive into the 4-3-2-1 custom tactics for FIFA 23, and you can see the team right here. I had to go change i've made i've started to make some tweaks to the team um because there was a couple of things i wanted to want to vary around for example vinicius jr i've got him untradeable very grateful for that he's 200k on the market not overly fond of him in next generation so we're gonna we're gonna make some tweaks and some changes obviously i've completed the, this spc and we packed payet from the level 27 uh league One prime players pack so tempted to work him into a squad for this week but that's what you're not here for the squad building you're here for the tactics, but this is the squad we were running for the weekend uh, in the practice in Division Rivals when testing the formation. And if we go over to it, you can see we're running the very common flat out system here, which is balanced, balanced, and direct passing. Essentially, on New Gen particularly, this is the best setup you can run on essentially any system at the minute like for your for your formation that you're going to use all game every game this is the setup you want obviously if you need a press an alternative you can you can mess around that put a press on if you want but so sort of the formation you can switch into at the start of every game and play majority of games with this is what you want we've got 35 wood and 72 depth the people how i've seen also posting tactics is have this depth around 65 but i wanted to be able to sort of press that a little bit higher um with the team 65 was working absolutely fine for me but i wanted to up it a little bit to 72 yeah, perfect. Honestly, that's a sweet spot for me. But obviously, if you're playing and you feel like it is too high up, it's too aggressive, you can change it down to about 65 at the minimum. 35 width because right now the meta seems to be for defensive width. You definitely want to be below 40. But if you go too close to 30, you're like you're way too narrow. And obviously, they can just abuse the wing. So again, 35 offers a sweet spot. Balance and direct passing. We've, we've touched this on this already. Um, the width for the attacking is. 45 and this is mainly because i want to avoid the striker and the center forwards from getting like too sort of overlapped and clunky to get our clunk clunk together 45 helps that as i always try to have the disparity and to be no more than 10 between the uh, defensive width and the offensive width so 45 is really maxing that out for what we can and then we have six players in box two corners and two free kicks is what i'm running on pretty much every formation at the moment when it comes to the personnel, backline and goalkeeper is self-explanatory. You don't need to go over to that too much. Most of the fullbacks, you want a player that can go forward and one that's maybe more defensively minded. Obviously, Theo Hernandez can do both. He can both be very good defensive fullback or he can go forward. But in this case, with Death being my more attacking minded one, um, that was sort of the setup I went for. In the midfield, you either want three box-to-box -box players, like they need to be able to do everything, or one of them could be a attacker with decent physicality and decent defending. So that fair of SBC or far of SBC is a good example where his defending is like around the 60th mark. He's got an all right physicality, but overall he is more attacking minded because you want two defensive box-to-box -box players and there's one player that you're going to be actually getting forward with and into scoring opportunities. And then the front three self-explanatory. You could run a narrow system and have three out and out strikers here. You get two strikers and a cam. I've obviously went with the 4-3-3 starting system or 4-5-1 starting system. So I have two wingers and a striker. And I, I don't know, I've got two explosive wingers and a striker. But the instructions is the main thing. Goalkeeper is on default. Now, depending on your goalkeeper, which says every video, you can put sweeper keeper and comes for crosses on. I will probably say I have didn't do this with Donnarumma because he has the traits. But with that in mind, I think moving forward, we will be putting on comes across and sweeper keeper, just because despite him having the traits, sometimes the AI with how it's set up in the game, like the traits don't so much work. Like for corners, for example, when someone puts the striker right on top of your goalkeeper, even if they have the traits, they don't move for it. And then it's an easy goal. So I think we might have to force that out of it. Um, the two center backs we don't want to change anything with the left back is going to be the guy who's on overlap and then the right back is going to be stay back and overlap now it doesn't quite make sense for me to have Dest as my stay back because he is more attacking minded and Theo Hernandez is bombing up the pitch for the balance of the team this is worked what worked best I didn't try it too much with it being flipped 
uh, and I think you do want to have him be the left back going forward and the right back more defensive. I had been using Dumfries for quite a while in this position instead. Obviously, with a shadow on him, he's just a lengthy defensive fullback who works really well. So just keep that in mind. Des did do a job here for me, and you can have ideally get two fullbacks who are sort of nice and balanced they can attack they've got good defended stats because then it's not too heavy sided and you can sort of have a bit of flexibility like for example i use the d-pad tactics quite a bit through the games to toggle attacking fullbacks just for a couple of minutes and then I'd switch it back off the central center midfielder out of the three is on stay back and cover center obviously it, it, this is very common in a three stack like this the central guy is going to be the more defensive minded obviously there's no strict defensive midfielder because it's a three set of center midfielders uh, so that obviously the instructions change a little bit with that but Benacer still works fantastic here for me and that combination of stay back and cover center is just a sweet spot on the left hand side of things this is going to be your more balanced off the center midfielders which is why Theo Hernandez is allowed to go forward uh where Deaths is on stay back and that's because there's the balance on the left hand side because Pellegrini is high high and he's only on cover centre he will get forward and naturally fits but he'll also defend when it's required and this is very important for the left central midfielder you can't get away with someone too aggressive and too attacking in this sense because they will have defensive duties for example if Fernandez is bombed up the pitch Pellegrini is going to cover that space for him as if it was the other way around and I had say Theo Hernandez on defensive and then i had dest on like allowing allow to go forward and then lamar the right center mid is just fully default and not cover center however you can play around with putting the get forward and get into the box for cross on basically my right hand side would have no cover at all so on that note lamar fully default don't want to change a thing at the minute with center midfielders you don't want to go too heavy with the instructions outside of maybe your defensive player um because if you put on get forward and get into the box or cross they just do it all the time obviously that's what you're asking for but it's just they're very committed to it and you end up leaving way too much space so i feel like for lamar you could put on either get forward or get into box or cross if you feel that's necessary but i quite like the combination as that is there we'll go with the striker next who is stay forward get in behind and stay central a couple of people essentially this is a very common setup but i've seen a couple of people run default for this when i started testing like this it worked well but i found i lacked attacking options sometimes because my striker was endlessly coming in and playing like a false nine obviously they're not on the false nine tactic or on the false nine instruction so it wasn't as aggressive as a true false nine uh, instruction would be but still they were dropping off way too much for build up and if you play really slow build up that might be good but for my style of fifa and what i say for the majority style of people like to play fifa i think doing stay forward stay central and get in behind and just using this this guy as an all-around goal scoring machine is what you want to do the right forward or the sorry it's no longer right forward it's the center forward on the right hand side they're also stay central get in behind and stay forward essentially this is where you're trying to create like a i'm going to say like a 4-4-2 almost when you see how vinius is set up Vinicius is set up a Kone or your right center forward in this case is essentially your secondary striker this can be a winger who i think you probably want honestly to be uh either controlled or explosive this works really nice having the combination uh Shomorodov has an art attack so he's lengthy Ikone was then on a dead eye and still explosive and that mix between the two meant that depending on who I had on the ball I could sort of approach the attacking um I could approach the attacking in a slightly different sense so on the left hand side of things it stays central get in behind and come back on defense and this is where I think Vinny Vinicius honestly if he was playing in the spot Ikone was in I might have had more success with him but having him come back was a bit of a pain when I had Rafael Leal Leal inform in here he did a tremendous job so for that position you want someone who's controlled preferably lengthy who obviously can attack but has sort of that with the lengthy uh, run style if you're an old gen i don't know just you can get away with running a winger here probably it'll be fine next gen you're gonna need a lengthy player i think to get the most out of it but that's the instructions that's the tactics let's go have a look at some of the gameplay examples for you guys we're kicking things off with the 5-2 ridge but as you can see this team Mint business. This was a very strong team we went up against. And we actually went one little down. We got caught a little bit here to sort of lack into. This is a good idea, even though uh, I can see that it shows you the defensive shape. I've been in an attack here, trying to play with the Vinicius. And actually, as I receive the ball to him, this will be really good. This whole transition will cover a lot of stuff for us. So as you can see, Vinicius is dropping back. You can just see here, Akilne is holding space, Shomar Rodolfo is holding space, but Vinny, as he's on comeback on defense, is gonna drop back and just hold this position, which obviously gives you a passing outlet for the buildup, which I think is the main utilization of it, not so much to actually have him defend. We give the ball away though, a bit foolishly. We, we messed around the play a poor pass. Uh, and that's how the midfield three stacks. 
So this is this will cover this pretty quickly for us. Obviously, I've pulled Pellegrini out, but Vinicius goes to cover that space. They eventually change. Honestly, man, I just step up, let Haaland completely through, and then Pro manages to score from that. It was all just pulling that centre back out. You see here, I switch into um I switch to Alba, I step up with it leave that space completely so again this is more so not a critique on the formation it's me pulling center backs out but i know it's a common issue for some of you guys to pull center backs out and that's maybe why you like more defensive sturdy systems to, to sort of give you a second chance this system if you drag center backs out for fun or defenders out for fun you will get punished for it this game was a true battle but we did manage to get back into it obviously dest here as a full back just sort of trying to cover the run Iconi manages to go in and win the ball for me and or sorry not Iconi. i think i might have been that was a little more, sorry. Um, Chomorado, I just take it around his defender there, and then we manage to score. That one is very much just that 50 50 chance with the defender uh with strong and that's why I, I like for next generation to have a lengthy player because then when you beat the man you'll actually be able to run through and get straight straight on the goal in regards to seeing how the center and mids attack we've got another good example here obviously lamar's here and i'm playing an l1 pass and i press l1 and you can see he starts to make the run kind of got caught up with strong and the pass didn't go through but look this falls right back to him i probably should have gone to the right hand side i went for the near post not too sure why but this is why you want a center mid on that right center mid spot who can actually score like you want that shooting to be at least 80 ideally closer to the 85 if you can if you've got a high tier card because they will be getting in the situations to score and that's what i'm saying that's that far of sbc could actually be really really good in a position like that i also accidentally had alaba on corners for this game so that was an interesting situation but we managed to win the ball back that was a Kone trying to win it back falls to his theo hernandez I don't know what he does. He messes around. I managed to step up, play a little ball in Daikone, and here, oh man, I got so lucky. That, that's the best way I can describe this. You can see how, how keen people are in this system to get into attacking the situation. So, obviously, I get the ball to Daikone here. Honestly, looking back on it, I should have held L2 at the left trigger, and I should have just hit a Travella shot. He's lined up perfectly for it. If I hold L2 and shoot right now, that goes in top bins, like, without a doubt. I played the extra pass trying to be smart about it, trying to get like the on the run shot. And then I get very lucky that it falls to Shremer off. But you can see just in general how keen people are to get the box. We've, we've won a box back here. We've got Ikone and Shremer off. Vinny was on, um, obviously we're transitioning from taking a corner. So the play players are a little bit um, out of position, if you will. But Lamar and Vinicius here both go to get into the box. Vinny then takes over that run. Lamar holds space. And then we get a little bit lucky with the finish. I like this whole transition as an, an example for you. Obviously, we're going to go and win the ball back here. And this is where um, you can get away with the explosive player sometimes. Because I think Foden is also explosive. So Dast, um, I have an Arctic on him to get him control, I believe. Um, which makes him a, a much more viable. Plus, he's got that one to watch upgrade. But we get the ball to him here. And I play it to Benacer. And for most of this game, I've been playing Benacer as my DM. But here, I want to play a big pass forward, and I send him on a run. So I've just done a little L1 pass to Pellegrini, play it off my other center midfielders. Bit lucky his, with how his Van Dijk um, comes forward there. Like, he, he maybe should have won that and tackle. But with the three center mid system, it gets much easier to all of a sudden send your defensive midfielder on a big run, because they're not deeper holding that space. Say, so we were 52 minutes into this game, I hadn't really attacked with Benacer at all. But I've now sent him on an L1 pass, and this is why you want basically the three centre midfielders to all be able to attack and score. Because he makes a beautiful run, he gets through, only has 70 shooting, but still manages to get a nice finish. Um, this is the second goal we concede, and I probably make a mistake, but this is Haaland, just being Haaland. The, you know, the AI co covered the, the run on the inside, he plays it to the outside, it is what it is. Again, another example where if you have a three back system, a five back system, maybe those defensive situations are a bit uh, a bit better for you, but you'll lose out a little bit in the attacking sense that this will vote the 4 3 2 1 brings. Now, at this point in the game, I've made all five substitutions. We brought Werner on, Liao on. And now, this is where it's sort of you're using your. Obviously, he mines his own stay forward. And this is probably a good example to discuss what I meant by the. The striker situation playing as a center forward. If you look at the bottom here, we've got Werner sort of holding the space and he's on stay forward. But if he wasn't on stay forward, he would come slightly closer to the center midfielders during this whole build-up phase. I actually manually use him as a center forward in this situation because there wasn't many passing lanes, but I'm trying to create more. We put Favre on at the right center mid spot. Lots of little link up here. Bit lucky to win that ball with Gakpo from being honest. That was a 50-50 that went in our favour. That little, I don't know, I don't know if you call it a feint or what I did with uh, Liao there. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'll need to go back and see. Actually, you've got the controller here. Let's see what I did with Liao. 
So I've tapped R2. I've all, okay, all, all, literally all I did, I wanted to double check because there are, they would double tap R1, they'll like sort of jolt forward a little bit. This was literally just a case of because I wasn't holding the sprint button, which you want to get out of the habit of doing. I hadn't been holding the sprint, but here I get the ball and I instantly go right. I want to beat Liao. Oh, sorry, I want to beat Van Dyke. So Liao's off the bench. He's not on uh, getting the cam boost too lengthy. Van Dyke's probably lengthy, but he's controlled, and I might be able to do that little split second. This is where explosive players have a benefit because in this five yard sort of quick burst, they're going to win, and that's vital in the box. We win there. We beat Van Dyke's tackle. We might as well go 4 2 up in the game. And then we very quickly put the fifth on it, and sorry, this is the icing on top of the cake so suggestion here. Getting a little bit um, fancy with it, and I, I found with attackers in general general like the first time shots used to be overpowered but in this situation when i get the ball on Verner, taking that touch and setting up for a finesse even if they don't have the finesse shot trail so we played a three here it didn't fall as nicely to him maybe like letting it run in front of him and taking that left foot shot first time would have been preferred but taking that touch because obviously the keeper started to come out if i take that touch it creates a bit more space it comes to the right and that's such an easy finesse goal then for Verner. that whole whole transition i'll run it now without pausing taking that little touch because obviously i've got the time tapping it to the right hand side as the keepers come out all of a sudden gives me more space to aim for in the right hand side of the goal uh, obviously left hand side on my webcam here because it's flipped but i mean that, that's what i can say for this 5-2 win that's covered quite a lot but i do have two other games one of which was a 2-0 rage quit and i'm going to show it to you guys next and then that should cover the bases for all of the formation or for all the setup. this is a counter attack that i really really like we step forward with brammer and won the ball back and then win it back again and we go forward here straight away we pump it to Rumadov. it comes to Icone. I went for Trello shot, I went for the L2. I feel like I probably should be finishing that, but this whole counter attack, like just how quickly, obviously it's dependent on Bremer winning that second ball. That's where you want centre backs that can pass. And I just, I should be doing better with Icone in that situation. That should be going 1 0 up. And again, in regards to winning the ball back and then sort of transitioning in play, we've won it back here. We wanted to run forward with Theo, but like no one's really going with it. So we had, we have to just play a bit slower sometimes with your centre midfielders. Try the odd long ball here and there. That was a lovely little bit of play. And honestly, this, this should be finished. I chipped it and it just didn't drop. But everything about this was really nice. We weighed it nicely. We managed to pull, make space for the Cody. Obviously, it seems that like this guy was playing a five of the back system. Seems like a 5 1 2 2 actually with the system right here. And obviously, he's covering with Moran. We do a little turn, and Zakaria just wasn't awake. And Sean Murdoch gets three. Maybe I should shoot normally, just go a power shot into the right hand corner there. Um, but again, that's another great example of the build up you can have with the system and the opportunities you'll get. Speaking of which, Benesser defensively comes up and picks the space. A little L1 pass to the corner to send them on a run, fall through, no one really tracks it at all, and we managed to go a 1 0 up. And back on chances that we should have scored, nice little link up here. Again, this is where I say Sean Murdoch isn't even like he's on stay forward, but he still ends up playing kind of like a link up because this is a sole striker with two center forwards. He ends up playing like this sort of link up role, and we do it again here, and it works really well. We managed to get through on goal. I chip it across to Vinny, take it down. And he just needs to square the keeper, man. And he's got a dead eye on, so maybe it's just how I how I play FIFA. But Vinicius Jr. for me, how I wish he was tradable because I would just pocket that 200k. But again, here, our, I think this is with the 72 depth against obviously a bit, a bit unfortunate we don't get it off but the 72 depth is really squeezing this guy so obviously he's, he's run the four five one two two we've already established five one two two we've got this high depth over the 70 depth on him so anytime he's trying to play out now obviously he has a lack of attacking options but then we've got this high squeeze depth so it just gives us a lot of space to get in and win balls back i play that over and it's just, it's just unfortunate that we don't score off that from Sean Murdoff. Ben Asser was fighting for the badge in this game, I'll say. Though his AI was going in and just winning things for me. It was absolutely fantastic. And this should now be the second goal. Again, I messed around with Sean Murdoff a bit here. The, uh, he obviously has a counter-attack sort of come up. Alaba steps in. I wouldn't complete Alaba if you're tight on coins, but if you've got the coins, he's really good. Again, Ben Asser steps in and wins the ball back for us. Iconi breaks free. I take my time this time because I was Iconi's finishing had been a little bit sketch. And I took my time. I will actually show sure I was it was a red script, but in most cases, and like if you're an old gen, what I can say is keep running here. Just you will you will win this race because Iconi has better pace. This doesn't work on next gen, and if you make the transition, you'll soon find that out. Because if Ikone is explosive, and this is a Varane, who I can only assume has been weird lengthy, 
and we've been running for how, how long have we been running for here? We're both the run has been started, so at this point, Varan's really picked up his max speed as I pause this. If I kept running there, Varan is 100% either making that block or more, more likely being able to get a tackle in before I even take the shot. So, shielding a little bit, which I didn't actually do, I just cut in, but L, pressing L2 there as well would have been beneficial for sure. That obviously, I've ran forward, you can see the control in the top right, guys. Um, I should have held L2 while turning in for shield, but that just gave me a different passing option. And actually, it was Benacer once again getting forward for me and that gets the rage quit and that's the gameplay for the 4-3-2-1 so guys that's my 4-3-2-1 tactics hopefully you can use them this week and pick up some extra wins and rivals and maybe get that extra high rank in champs this weekend so let me know if you do use them how you get on with them i always love getting that feedback from you let me know if there's any tweaks you found you had to make obviously with all these custom tactics and custom tactics from anyone on on youtube or any social media platform we find take them as a base reference and tweak them to how it fits you so i'd say if you find that you need to run the depth a little bit lower you can if you feel that it's a little, maybe the width isn't 35 for the defensive is a bit too narrow you want to go 38 you can it's always a base point these are very good tactics they work for me and for the majority of players you should be able to put them in and see success with them but to maximize that success you need to tweak it to how you play so with that in mind thank you very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it hit that like button if you did enjoy the video hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and we'll catch you in tomorrow's squad building video thank you very much for watching and goodbye